crackberry.com. <laughs> Hey everybody, Ryan here at Trackberry.com, a BlackBerry DevCon 2011. We're going to take a look at some of the uh, developers that are here today. Uh, some that are, have their booth set up and some that are probably just wandering around. So let's go take a look and see what they have to offer. Alright, here we are at Search for BBM booth. So uh, you can tell us who you are and what you guys do. Okay, hi everybody. My name is Dimo Brian. I'm the CEO of uh, Search for BBM. Search for BBM established about uh, six months ago. The uh, Wirefoot uh, launch about three uh, uh, months ago. What we do is basically uh, we can search engine for BBM users. Uh, it is in several levels. The first level, if you like to search for your friends, your social network friends, or your contacts to see if they have BBM, you can do it with your own service. Second level is to search people by name. Let's say you meet someone in the convention or on the street, and you want to see if they have BBM. Go ahead, type his name and search to see if you got it. Um, third level is to search for people, uh, not specifically, search by category. Let's say you go to Brazil or to Stockholm and you must find someone with the same interest as yours. You can uh, put in the category, search, you got a full list of those people. And another level is location based. Let's say you're in a bar or a football game or a convention and you see if someone around you. That's uh, BDM, same, same, same thing, just log in and you find the people around it. <coughs> Sorry, last level is professional, small and medium professional. Let's say you like to find a uh, locksmith or a taxi driver that's around you, same thing with our application or our website. And okay, that's basically Very cool. Awesome. And how, uh, how have you guys know, found business so far? Actually, um, as I mentioned before, three yeah. months ago we just uh, had our uh, soft launch. Yeah. Um, and about the uh, last two weeks, uh, we had a nice list. I guess it's uh, pretty much connected to the fact that we're here. We got a lot of help from the uh, RIM guys around here. Really in the last three months, we, got, we have something like half a million uh, registered users. Oh, wow. Which, which is nice. We have no advertising or nothing. Uh, we're looking for progression with other applications. Uh, Send interest as ours and database and then users. Uh, we, we're pretty happy with it. Oh, good. Awesome. All right, we are, and what do you do? We are Polar Mobile. Uh, we are effectively the mobile department for media companies. So, with one relationship with us, we're able to deploy native applications for smartphones and tablets for some of the leading international media companies. Um, we've got about 300 customers, which those customers are in about 11 countries now, and users in about 100. And really what differentiates us is that it's all push button productized. So effectively, a media company can use a website that we provide and uh, a platform we provide to pick what sort of configuration they want for their media applications, to deploy it with us, we host it, we manage it, we mature it in cases where new OS come out, new devices come out, we take care of all that. Um, and it just lets them get on their way and start running their business. Do you have any examples uh, that we can take a look at? Some of the Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So whatever, you know, you can actually work cross platform. So if you're in any store, type in Polar Mobile, you can get the apps. Um, our CTO was on stage yesterday. Unfortunately, he's not here at the booth right now. Mm -hmm. But he demoed the Toronto Maple Leafs application for smartphones. Um, and I uh, the CFL mobile application for Playbook. Okay. Um, so some really clean implementations of media experiences. All right. Can you take a look at the... Uh... Absolutely. Okay. Always worry about how these demos are going to look. No pressure. Glass, but... No pressure. So, we'll come all the way back here. So this is for the CFL, the Canadian Football League. Um, uh, the implementation is completely HTML5. Uh, this is live in stores today. So it's a very natural experience, very rich graphics here, taking advantage of the richness of content that CFL provides for us. Um, there are a ton of great sections here uh, that you can flick through. Uh, photos tends to be a very popular one because of the medium. And again, very natural navigation experience, as you would expect. Very slick, you're sliding through. Similarly, if you were to go to, to a piece of content take a look at it, you're going to the next piece of content, you're obviously being able to flick through here, able to share it with your friends, I'm not logged in, on Facebook, on Twitter, doing a live demo, of course these things happen. Mm -hmm. um, I can edit it. <laughs> okay. 
don't know what I did there. It was a live app. Um, <laughs> so yeah, so that's our demo for CFL Mobile. And then um, Toronto Maple Leafs, whether you're a fan or not. Uh, this is an application that you'd, you'd obviously use on the go. Uh, it's your opportunity to keep in touch with your team wherever you are. Um, as you can see, the Leafs are going to play the uh, Jets tonight. You get the opportunity here to see what games are coming up. And when they come up, all of these great stats will fill in. Um, from a stats perspective, if you are a sports fan, you are you are thinking about this stuff all day. As fantasy people are living and breathing it. You got the players, you got the goalies, the forwards, um, and even the defensive partnerships. Um, so that's kind of unique. See where your team ranks in the league. And of course, a very natural experience here. Schedule to see what games are coming up. Um, kind of a natural calendaring experience here. So there's really no excuse to miss a game. And then media, uh, which is a, a great opportunity on the BlackBerry device, especially with the high resolution and, and the connection types you'll get. Um, it does look like they have any media to show right now. Uh, this is the opportunity to see what's behind the scenes that the Leafs are going to put up, okay. press conferences and things like that. Perfect. Awesome. Thanks. I appreciate that. All right, so tell us who you are and what you guys do. All right, I'm Carrie Gofran. I'm the Director of Professional Services at Matova, and we are a custom mobile application development company. We have 18 developers uh, just by Nashville, Tennessee, just south of there. Um, everybody's in the office working with us every day, and um, we handle, I handle sales up front. Uh, there's no cost for any of that, and we give a proposal to our potential customers and uh, go from there. So we turn their dream app into a reality, hopefully, hopefully um, with all their fun features and you know, giving them a good idea of what to expect and what not to expect when they come with great ideas that sometimes can be done on phones. So, um, you can see some of our customers up here. We do um, Blackberry, Android, iPhone, and Windows Phone 7. We've also done some playbook apps internally. Look at the. Uh, yeah, so these are examples of some of what you. Yes. So Jazz is a company off of eHarmony. Pepco um, Self Service is an electric company. So that's for their customers to see outages. Very cool. Awesome. Okay. There we go. Hey Ryan, Tim Wando with uh, Universal Mind and the VP of Business Development. Universal Mind is a digital solutions agency, and uh, what that means is we take the best of an interactive agency and we combine it with the best of a solutions provider and systems integrator. Right? So we have fantastic experienced designers, right, with extraordinary technology uh, team members, all bridged together with uh, exceptional delivery management, which is kind of the mix between executive producer, technical project manager, and a customer relations person. Right? We have a love connection with Brim and Blackberry that spans about two years. Mm -hmm. uh, about a year and a half ago, we started working with them on a proof of concept and a vision prototype for a fantasy football application that, uh, that was debuted at Max. Um, was that last year? It was last year. Yeah. Last year. So Joe Johnston, um, our experienced design evangelist, worked uh, integrally on this project with, uh, in collaboration with the Green Team uh, and our team. Um, and you may have seen this out there in the uh, public domain. Uh, it it's, leverages our capabilities and our, our talents in flex, flash, and air, obviously. So it was a natural fit for us to tackle this, uh, this puppy. It's moved on from there. Um, we've done a number of different applications on the playbook. We have, uh, we have grand aspirations and big hopes and dreams for this device, and we really want to see its success. But as uh, we all know, that really depends upon the fidelity and the quality of the experiences that go right. into it, right? Yeah, for the exactly. community, it's really up to the community okay. to kind of provide that. Um, and for RIM to support them. Uh, you know, as we were talking about, the development support uh, and the creative support needs to be there. Um, and I'm, uh, I'm bullish that RIM is gonna step up to that challenge in the uh, coming year. Joe, check this out. Talk about it. 
So this is one of many of our artist experiences. We have a whole platform that we use for um, a digital artist experience. This is one that we port over to the playbook. We all have these on uh, iOS as well. But uh, this is basically Far East Movement. They had a song Rocketeer. This kind of ties into their album that they did. Um, we have some videos. We have some uh, other types of music and audio. Um, also, but it's also a story experience as well too. So we designed some things in here interactive wise where during the story of the, the video, the, the individual is building a uh, rocket. So we have ability to draw some rockets and do some fun stuff, do some sharing as well, and see what other people have posted in there as, as, as well inside of the application. Um, that was all a uh, HTML5 type of integrated piece inside of a Flash environment, mm -hmm. so we're incorporating some dual level technologies there to help kind of speed up the process of some development times and creating some of the uh, interactivity layers of things. Uh, we also bring in some uh, social aspects of things and doing some uh, uh, different types of concerts and uh, the, the different places that they'll be playing. There's also, this is another HTML5 component that we're bringing in some in interactivity of building a rocket ship and then getting some exploratory items and receiving some uh, other pieces of content. Um, and then also there's a little bit of a fun little, um, whoops, fun, a, a fun little, well, hard to do it sideways, but you can do a little turntable action. They have this, their design style is a little sketchy and fun and has all these little pieces of information that pop up when you do a little twisting on the on the thing. And then we also have the uh, little fun image here at the last, the uh, individual taking off with his rocket and then ending with a download the album type of experience. This is one of many. We did another one with uh, Lady Gaga. We also have another one that's actually going to be launching fairly soon on iOS platform and then migrating over to Playbook in the future mm -hmm. for Jimi Hendrix. Um, yeah and has quite a few different um, screens here I can pull up. Big story, it's a big complete experience of, uh, of Jimmy, so it's a very in-depth, a lot of uh, music, a lot of uh, other pieces of content, in-app purchase-wise, and uh, we're going to be taking that experience and putting it over to the playbook, tying into their, hopefully tying into their music experience as well in the future. So. Let me show you this, Ryan. So, Spatial Key um, is a wholly owned subsidiary of Universal Mind. Um, it is a data visualization tool. It takes in any data set, mm -hmm. right? And then maps it with coordinates. So, uh, we've been working with large insurance companies on a really cool idea. What if you could actually intersect your uh, policy data, right? And your assets against uh, the probability of storms and events? earthquakes, mm -hmm. uh, hurricanes, and you could start doing some pretty simple and yet powerful modeling using this tool. This, there, there are modeling applications and um, large probability uh, applications that uh, actuaries and insurance agents and insurance companies use, uh, but they can be very, very uh, cumbersome and uh, they tend to be large spreadsheets and they require a certain sort of finesse. Yeah. But wouldn't it be cool if you could actually just follow the hurricane, right? Check the data, and as it's coming real time, really know what the, uh, what the level of your, um, what the level of your exposure is from a financial standpoint. So, I don't know if you can do it, yep. And then you can actually say, estimate, well, what happens if the hurricane were actually to hit right on Florida? Then you can actually assume that that's where your biggest possible um, damage area is going to be. This being from an insurance, you know where all those claims are going to be, so you can start anticipating to contact people, start getting stuff ready that that, that may be it. So that's maybe, so you can actually manipulate the actual uh, forecast and actually see what damages might be caused. And it, you may have own properties for it. It's not really doing it right now because the speed, I don't know if we have the connection speed, but it recalculates everything uh, and then shows you the new number. Right, we have this, another really compelling and uh, frightening uh, model for me because I live in San Francisco, spitting distance from the Hayward Fault, mm -hmm. is uh, is an, taking the earthquake data, the shake map data, right, from the USGS, and then mapping that. So we can now, we get that information and we load it into unique specific applications uh, or instances of spatial key and then hand it off to insurance companies and, and other companies that are interested in kind of figuring out what uh, what kind of financial exposure they have. It's pretty cool. Pretty cool stuff. And it's it works beautifully on the playbook. We're actually porting this exercise or porting this application over to be a little bit more native friendly um, to the playbook. Crackberry.com